This week I look at how you can move your cutout characters more flexibly by using multiple pegs and how you can use columns in place of pegs so the keys show on the timeline. Let's get started. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to today's video. If you're new here my name's Darren and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. If that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe so you don't miss out. So ordinarily you only add movement to the main part of your character, probably the torso, to move it across the screen. Because you wouldn't want to move the arm independently it needs to be connected to the body. Likewise for the skull and the rest of the body parts. So normally it's the body part that's connected to the table, which in this case is the hip. So if you click and drag, the whole body moves with it. So this adds a key into the timeline, you can see here on frame 1. And if you want the character to move, you click on the frame you want them to move to, and then click and drag, and they'll move across that frame range. So from frame 1 through to frame 12. However, that's not necessarily the best way to add movement, as it restricts you to adding only one movement type to your character. And I've touched on this in other tutorials, but let me show you again briefly here. So the best way to add movement isn't to move the root item of your character, but to add a peg and move that instead. So if we just move these out of the way, and to add a peg, you click on the peg button at the bottom right of the schematic view. And that adds a peg onto the screen. So what you need to do is to parent the peg to the main parent part of your character, in this case the hip. And you can double click inside the peg title area, and then rename it. And now with the peg selected, you change the center of this to somewhere on your character. And remember this is also the rotation point. So if you intend to rotate your character, you should replace it at the point where you're going to rotate them from. So I'll place it at ground level. And then you change to position, and very simply as we did before, in frame one, make sure you're adjusting the peg, set the position of the character, and as you move your peg, the character follows it because it's a child of the peg. And then again, I'll go to frame 12 and move the peg to the right. And then as you run the animation from frame 1 through to frame 12, you see the character moving. So you might ask, what's the difference between using a peg and just moving the character? Well, it's got a few benefits. The first one is you can add multiple types of movement to different pegs. So for instance, I could add a second peg, insert that into the chain of movement, I can add an additional movement to simply moving from left to right. So for instance, at frame 5, I could add a key using this second peg. And then to frame 7, I can move the character up, frame 9, and move them back down again. And if I go through that animation, the character moves to the right, and then hits a bump, goes into the air, there, and then comes back down again. And by adding the two movements to two separate pegs, it means you can later edit them rather than having them as a single combined movement. So if you take a look into the function editor, now you can see the two movements much more clearly. You can see that in the first peg, the character simply moves from left to right. In the second one, there's an additional bump in the middle. But we could actually move that to be later or earlier. So it gives us much more flexibility. Plus, of course, you can set individual interpolations for different kinds of movements. And I used this last week with the BB-8 animation to add the road bumps alongside the general movement of the character. But last week, the main movement I'd already built into the body of the character instead of a peg. And I didn't want to change that, but that brought up another problem, the shadow. So if I had a shadow for this character, Okay, so simply an overlap I've drawn for now would later add a transparency effect to make it appear more shadow-like. Now as the character moves, you want the shadow to move with them, so what we need to do is to connect the shadow to the skeleton peg, like this, and then reposition the shadow again, so that's underneath, and then as the skeleton moves, the shadow moves with it. And that's fine for movement, but if you wanted the character to rotate as it did last week with the BB-8, the shadow would rotate with the body because it's connected with the same peg. Which isn't at all what you want. So what we do in this instance is add a new peg for rotation only. And again, simply plug this in to the chain of pegs. But of course I've put it in the wrong position here. 
because we want the rotation to happen on the body of the skeleton and not on the shadow. So we've set the center point for this peg to be where we want to rotate. And then as we rotate that peg, only the character moves and not the shadow, because the shadow is connected to here. So we've set some animation for the rotation by adding a key on the first frame. By frame four, we want to rotate to the left. Then if we play the animation, you see the skeleton rotates as it moves and then continues to move to frame 12 as we set up earlier. So each peg has its own set of movements, rotations and scale values that can be applied to it independently of the other pegs. But as you saw earlier, the only way to see these values is through the function editor. So if I include the next set of peg values of the rotation, you can see them changing from frame 1 through to frame 4. And as with all values on the function editor, you can edit them directly in line and they'll still affect the animation. But the one niggle about using pegs in this way is that the values don't appear on the X sheet or timeline. But there's a small workaround to fix that, and I've shown that in previous tutorials, but I'll run through it again now. And I'm hoping the peg values will appear as keys in the future on the timeline, but until then, the fix is to use a layer instead of a peg. So if I just remove those pegs first, so all you need to do is add a new column to the X sheet, and now you can simply plug it in as we did before. So this one's for rotating the skeleton. Let's add another. So okay, so I've added three new columns. One for the main position of the skeleton, one for the bump in the road, and one for the rotation. Okay, so all we need to do is apply the same movements to these columns that we applied to the pegs. So if we take a quick look at that, so from frame one the character starts to move to the right, rotates as it goes, the shadow follows it, the small bump in the road at six, into the air and back down again. Then the character rotates back to the central position on frame 12. And now you can read all that from the X sheet by seeing the keys there. And as always, you can edit them in the function editor in the same way you could for pegs. Finally, there's one more feature by using columns as pegs, and that's that you get this extra button at the bottom of animation keys, which allows you to repeat the animation which is really useful for background animations like a car driving along a road and bumping up and down. So to have the animation repeat, you simply click on the button here and then you see this wiggly line which shows the animation is going to repeat. So if I just hit play starting at frame 1, the character moves to the right and then you see him continue to bump up and down throughout the rest of the animation. So that's how you can use pegs and columns as pegs to move your cutout character. And next week I'll be looking at using your cutout in multiple projects by loading them as sub -X sheets. So why not hit that subscribe button to not miss it? And comment below if you have any questions regarding cutout or any other feature of OpenTunes and I'll try to answer them. So I'll see you next week when I look at reusing your character in multiple projects. And that's a guarantee. Um.